Hi everybody, welcome to the Lure Making Hour, uh, second edition, where we'll be talking a bit about airbrushing. And uh, hello to Adam from Canada, nice to see you, and I'm glad that you find my stuff helpful. Hello Johan, and there's a few others in here I see, we are about 16 persons now, hopefully we'll be a lot more, at least I hope so. Um, the goal for today, last time it was uh, 50 viewers to uh, to reach a price, but uh, this time uh, we're going for 60. So um, well, let's see. Well, let's see how we have how well we are doing. Um, the program from today will be uh, a bit of talk about uh, my um, my uh, airbrush setup, what I use. I'm not an expert. But um, I do manage to uh, to paint some lures that uh, seems to be uh, effectful. So um, hopefully I can teach you something, or at least uh, show you what I what I use. Hello, Nick, as well. Nice to see the the American side of the the Atlantic is joining in. Got strong echo. Okay, I'll just uh, try to fix that. Just a second. I'll just see if I can uh, do something. Strong echo. I'll just uh, see if I can hear it myself just a second. in a second I'll just test this out just a second hello okay I as well uh, okay Well, Tommy, I just uh, tested the the, the strong uh, the the sound in my uh, setup, and it seems to be quite well. I uh, hopefully it is not uh, this one. Do you have it again, or did you have it before? Um, I'm Nick and uh, Vladan. Does everyone have strong echo? Please um, say something. Okay, it seems that the, the sound is fine. Okay, um, well, I'll be going through my, my airbrush setup and only one thing that I can't show you because uh, that's my compressor. I have one of these uh, small compressors that doesn't have a, a tank on it. It is just, um, every time you, you use your airbrush, it just starts pumping and it's quite noisy. So I placed it behind this wall uh, in order to uh, to avoid uh, all this um, compressing all the time, so I can't show you that one. Apart from that, I'll just uh, go through the setup, and I might have to run to the compressor. I hope this will work anyway. Okay, so what do you need to um, to start airbrushing? Well, first of all, of course, as I told you, you need an, uh, a compressor of some sort. You can get a large one with a big tank on it. Uh, that will hold a lot of air, which will mean that it will only run uh, occasionally when the the, the air is uh, used in the tank. Um, so there's many uh, ways, but this one is uh, the one that I have. It's quite small. Uh, it runs all the time, but it isn't that noisy. And if you are working uh, by yourself, uh, not having a camera running, uh, it doesn't seem to be a problem. So that's what I'm using. Apart from that. When you're starting, of course, you'll need some uh, uh, airbrush pistols. Um, there's many different uh, grades of uh, quality. 
uh, and uh, I shouldn't say that, that one is much better than the other. Um, for many years I just used some cheap ones, uh, which would be in the maybe $100 range in Denmark. Uh, the price would probably vary from, from country to country, but that would be uh, somewhat in the lower end, uh, and I was quite satisfied. But I must admit, that as I moved a bit up to some Iwata brushes, airbrushes here, um, things just got much better. Um, most of all, from for um, for cleaning and stuff like that, which is a big part of airbrushing, uh, they're just uh, much better. And uh, so far, I have had no problems with them. So this is my favorite, and. Um, it is an Ivata Revolution with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. Uh, those of you from um, from US and Canada I will have to uh, to recalculate that to inches because uh, I I don't know that exactly. But that's a fairly big nozzle, and um, that works for me because uh, well I'm not that talented in in freehand uh, airbrushing. So generally I use a lot of stencils, and with stencils well you don't need to uh, be that precise. You can just uh, you can just uh, use a, a nozzle that will give you a lot of paint uh, fairly quickly. So I use this one with a 0.5 uh, millimeter nozzle, and, and it works very well for me. Uh, apart from that, you can see here uh, there's a, a device that will uh, separate the water. I don't know if it's called water separator. Um, there's one here, and I actually also have one. Uh, sitting on my compressor, so that's kind of a double, but when you are painting uh, a larger quantity, uh, it's very nice to um, to uh, to have such a thing, uh, and there's nothing worse than actually having water blown onto your paint. Uh, so, well, this is a, a great thing to have. Okay, and that's all in the hose and everything. Then there's a few other things that are nice to have. I have a cleaning station, which is also a holder for my brush. This one will enable me to uh, empty the, the whatever is left in the, the airbrush, and um, that will just end up in the, the pot there. There's a filter that prevents it from blowing out again. Also have a, a little uh, tank, which I use for leftover color and cleaner. And uh, for those of you who follow my channel, I have my um, my uh, Lua handling system, which will help me with uh, holders for different kind of Luas and everything. Um, yes, apart from that, some tools that I'm very fond of. I use water and alcohol for the cleaning. Actually, mainly water, um, but uh, sometimes if if uh, it seems to, to be hard to, to get the, the, the rest of the color out. The, the alcohol will help you uh, dissolve that. But generally, just water. And the water I use is uh, not straight from the, the tap, because here in Denmark we have uh, fairly much uh, calcium in the water. So, uh, so I use it from the, the clothes dryer, uh, the, the leftover from the condensation dryer for clothes. Uh, I can just pour that into this. And this is... Uh, more or less both uh, filtered and uh, and calcium free, so that's uh, fairly nice to use, and it won't uh, clog up my uh, my airbrush. Okay, then I have a few tools. Uh, I have some brushes. The brushes are used both for for cleaning the the airbrush, uh, mainly in the in the chamber here. It's uh, nice to have a a little brush to clean it, but also use it for mixing colors both in the cup and in uh, uh, small um, containers I have. So those are very helpful and uh, if you buy them online you can find uh, uh, places in China where you can get uh, 10 of those for uh, $2 or something like that. And that's even delivered here in Denmark, so that's uh, very nice and very helpful uh, for that. Other parts you need for, for cleaning. It's good to have a set of brushes to help you keep clean the, the canals. So I have that. Also use these uh, 
These are small uh, dental devices for cleaning between the teeth, but they're very useful for cleaning uh, the small spaces in the, the airbrush. Then least of no, and, and mostly important is uh, this one. It's a needle that is uh, five and a half, so you can uh, put it into the nozzle and twist it gently and uh, scrape off any uh, leftovers in there that are dried or anything. That I think this is um, this is a, a must to have. Chemicals floating plastic float. I don't know. Sorry, ATB, I don't understand your question. Okay, and then of course one thing you will also need is the little wrench that will enable you to uh, to open the airbrush off and peel off the nozzle. I'll go through the cleaning of the brush later because, as I said, this is an important part of airbrushing. It's being able to clean it both thoroughly and, uh, and easily and uh, with not too much time spent. Okay. Well, then, of course, also cotton swaps. Those are also nice to use for cleaning the, the airbrush. And, um, well, normally I would use a, a mask and some gloves. Maybe not always gloves, I tend to forget it sometimes. And uh, after I got my paint booth here, I may not always use my mask because it actually uh, moves the air the right way, so I don't inhale all the paint. But if you're painting in some other area, more open area, I would advise you to uh, wear a mask. And uh, I don't think the acrylic paints that I normally use are not uh, are very unhealthy to, to you, but you can always wear gloves to be certain that you are not uh, affected by that. Okay, as I said before, I'm not that skilled at hand uh, uh, at uh, hand painting or uh, painting uh, by hand, so, so I usually use a lot of stencils. And the stencils, well, I make them myself out of pieces of plastic, like these ones, different uh, patterns, very easy, soft plastic. Just uh, paint the pattern you like. As you can see, I normally uh, make the, the outline of the lure on it, paint the pattern I like, and cut it out with a with a knife uh, or a scalpel. I usually use a scalpel because that's very nice. These stencils have um, have one uh, problem. As I've uh, maybe if, if you've seen the, the the some of the movies in my channel, well, you know that I'm very fond of these um, these uh, thermoform stencils like these ones, uh, which will actually fit right onto the the lure. Because the problem with these uh, stencils, the flat ones, is that, well, your lure is round and the stencil is flat. It will give you a gap between the two that will uh, enable paint to get in there. And the, the pattern you get will often be uh, less sharp in the edges um, if you want that. But, well, for this lure, for some reason, I have never gotten around to, to making actually... Uh, some thermoformed uh, stencils for that, so I'll still be using these flat one for that. It will work, but it is not as easy as uh, as with the one other ones. Also, one of my favorites, the the steel mesh I use for making scale patterns, uh, which is also shaped to fit around the lure. Um, and giving me a very nice diamond shaped uh, pattern. This is uh, one of my favorites. I know you probably can't get it uh, everywhere in the world. It is called uh, stretched metal plate, I think, mesh. I will, I will, I will really make a, a, a comment on that. It, it's actually a plate that has tiny little slices done to it, and then they pull it apart and this gives it this uh, nice uh, diamond shape.
No, uh, ATP, I'm not making uh, soft plastics today. I do it oftenly, but not today. Today I'm uh, going to paint uh, Lewis in resin. Okay, I have the flat stencils. I don't have any thermoformed for this one, uh, which I really use. And I have these mesh uh, ones for the scale pattern. Okay, there's a, a hint for you to, uh, if you live in the, in the UK, how to get that mesh. Um, okay, well, apart from that, of course, there's the paint. And, uh, well, there are dozens of different uh, producers of this, and I must say I don't have a complete favorite. I use uh, uh, many different uh, uh, producers, uh, like uh, this one, which is called, I think, Speed Dry My Magic Color from something uh, West. I use uh, Createx, I use uh, Wicked, I use uh, Vallejo, I use Auto Air. Well, more or less everything I can get my hold on if I think it has the right color. Um, so, um, well, it's just a question of finding something you like. And uh, I have a few uh, favorites, uh, especially these two from, from Magic Color. I, they are probably not available everywhere, but I like the, the, white and, the white and black here because they work very fine without being thinned or anything, uh, especially in my... my uh, my big nozzle airbrush here. Uh, one thing you also always need is some reducer. Uh, if the, the paint is really thick, you'll have to reduce it to get a good flow in the airbrush. And that is actually one of the most important things to learn when you are airbrushing is to find the right mix for you, the, the airbrush you're using. Uh, especially uh, thinner nozzles will have to be uh, reduced quite quite much and then you also have to be very when you do reduce it much you also have to be uh, very uh, careful that you don't have runners on your bait so uh, well anyway you'll need to learn how to use the the reducer um, as good as you can that is very important <laughs> Okay, uh, reducing your airbrush with vodka or cleaning, I don't know. It sounds um, alternate. Um, okay, is there anything else I have forgot to mention? I'm just uh, looking around and I'm just taking a drink of water. Or juice, actually. I think, uh, as they say, there sometimes you can put a, a ball bearing in the the, the container to uh, mix them up easily, and, and actually some of the the ones I use have that from the factory. I think this one, yeah. So some of them have, and I think it's not a ball bearing. Actually, I think they use the uh, glass uh, glass balls for that. Let's get painting. Yeah. Okay, well, I, um, as I said in the, in the text, I wanted to, uh, to paint some of the lures from the last show. And uh, I, I know that I, I'm, I won't be able to paint uh, dozens of lures, so I have uh, decided to start with um, the Little Fat Jerk, uh, as that is uh, uh, one of my fairly new baits, um, and I just uh, like it that much. Uh, uh, two here, which I have already primed with white, because that is just too boring to watch. And I also uh, given them a pearlized belly um, with a pearlized white color. And well, that I just always do that. I like that. Most of my baits have a pearlized white belly, so um, so that uh, I always do. But I've done that as preparation and. Uh, 
I will just need to do one thing before we start painting, so just give me a one second here. I'll just need to go to my computer and uh, I will just, if I can like that and Okay, my primer, well, I actually don't use an, a specific primer, uh, generally I just use uh, this one in white, and I've just uh, gone ahead and bought a big bottle of it so I can just uh, prime that away, because it's, uh, it works very well in my, my airbrush, so I'll just uh, use that one. And uh, hopefully you will be able to see what I'm doing here, I had a little bit of problem, uh, with the second uh, camera here and it has a bit of flickering to it but uh, hopefully it will uh, help me to at least uh, show you a bit of, uh, of what I'm doing here. Okay, and I think I will uh, try to make something that is very common the, that you showed here, the, the perch pattern here. Um, I will try to do that which is a pattern that I think that uh, most uh, people can relate to at, uh, at some level. So I'll try to do that. And uh, well, let's see uh, how everything turns out. So I'll just grab some colors here. And unfortunately, I will be sitting with my back to the, to the chat now. So uh, I will just have to look once in a while. Just making sure that uh, the brush is empty, making sure that uh, the, the color is mixed well. And this uh, Valero color actually, especially this one which is on uh, aluminum, is just very nice. It's very thin flowing so it's very easy to use without uh, any, um, any reducing done. And, uh, that is just very helpful. So I'll just put on my my masking here first to um, to make the the silver scales to it. Like that. And just pick it off. This is actually not that easy to see, I think, but uh, well, we'll try anyway. Flip it over, take the other one. Somebody has been handling these less carefully than they should. I see, but. Uh, They're a little out of shape, I see, but um, still. Like that. I don't know how much you can see, but. Okay. And then. Well, like always, clean up the brush. And um, for this part, I just, uh, well, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sitting with my back to the camera. Okay, well, just. Put in some uh, water, put your finger in front of the nozzle. I can do that with this brush because um, it's 
designed for that. Well, and I just uh, blow out the rest, and we're right, ready to uh, to give it one more. Well, then I'll be using some uh, some yellow color, as you can see. This one beside the the, the silver scales in the in the back, it will have a, a, a yellow, yellowish uh, color to it. So I'll add that. And this is a trans transparent color to uh, letting the, the silver scales uh, be visible through the... And this... Uh, I think uh, we'll get into a bit of uh, painting later. I'll show you how I do it. The lower part of the body has been uh, having a little bit of uh, yellow uh, introduced here, and I'll uh, I'll just clean up the the airbrush again, in with a bit of water, using a bit of glow black, pouring it into the and some colors are easier than other to uh, to switch between. Generally, I would say, well, the black one is of course the the worst. It is just uh, just a little bit of pigment will really leave you with a lot of cleaning. Um, so I'll just uh, well here I can see I'll just uh, use a cotton swab to uh, get the leftover. Also, you can use it here in the nozzle to clean out there. Just remember to pull back the needle because you don't want that one to be bent. So always, if you're doing something out there, pull back the needle. Okay? Well, then, further up the body, as you can see, they have it, have, it has a, a, a nice green tone. So I will... Um, Try to switch over to that, so I'll grab a transparent green. Once again, same brand, but uh, there is probably many of that out there. Okay. Trying to get a nice smooth uh, transition between the two colors here. I hope. 
Yes, I know that uh, many people use this uh, window cleaner to uh, clean the airbrush. Uh, window cleaner is uh, also just a combination of uh, of water and alcohol. So the main components of window cleaner is water and alcohol. So that's why I use those two parts. And of course, there's probably a few other decreasing uh, things in that that um, maybe will help you. I just uh, think that uh, well, plain alcohol and uh, and water works fine with me. I don't actually need this, but um, as I have color left in the, the airbrush, I'll just uh, use that to making the back a bit clean again. Okay. Uh, well, so far so good. We now have a nice transition between the two colors. Okay. So um, once again, I need to clean um, but this time not as much as I will be turning into another green, so I'll just uh, okay, and it's empty and um, For this purpose, I will be using um, a pearlized color like this one. And pearlized colors is generally thicker flowing than most most other uh, most uh, uh, simple colors, uh, due to the the the, the tiny uh, metallic flakes that are in them. They tend to get a bit uh, thicker. So um, this one I have actually already mixed up, but uh, so I'll just try to show you by using a, a non-mixed one it isn't that heavy flowing this one but uh, some of the the ones you're using will be so well i'll just think i'll be using a few drops so i'll just uh, place a few drops down in my my airbrush now and then i need a tiny little amount of black to go into that to make it darker and I'll uh, just take a plastic lead here there's no color on it the color is on the other side so I'll just take that and I'll just place a drop of black on that and this black placed into that one would make it completely black so I'll have to to take a, a little bit of it just a tiny little bit. So I use a brush here and I'll just grab just a little bit and uh, maybe you can see, I don't know, but you can see there's very little black here but as soon as it gets down here in my uh, green color you can see that it made quite a lot of difference. Even that tiny little amount of black made this dark green instead of uh, very light green. So also, well it's hard for you to see, but if I pull up the, the paint a little off the side, it stays there. And that's because it's uh, it's too thick, and this will be too thick to run well in the in the, the airbrush. So I'll just uh, put in a few drops of reducer. This was actually maybe too much, three, four drops here. And uh, then once again, I'll use the, the brush here to uh, to mix it. Pull up a little along the side, see if it's uh, 
seems to be, it should run down fairly easy. I'll actually give you one more drop, I think. And also, I will try to just they make a little bit of blowback in order if, if there's paint that has run down into the channel um, to the nozzle, I will just let it go back so I can make sure that everything is uh, mixed up here. Okay, and I think it's about there. So I'll just make ready for the next part here. I forget to look at the yeah the Gobi lure is also my favorite. I don't actually have one here, but yes, that is really one of my favorites. Okay. Well, I'll just grab my stencil for the for the perch pattern. Here it is. I'll see if. Uh, Seems that the car is running smoothly. It is. And um, then I will place it here and I will have to hold on to it due to this type of uh, stencil here. So I'll try to keep it as close to the to the lure as possible. I think we're about there, and then you have to be careful not to move your stencil because, uh, well, that will give you a kind of a double image. I think we're about there. Yeah. And I'll just uh, turn the lure over. Well, and one thing you have to be careful now, like I just did, I just painted one side and I'm now going to paint the other side. But, well, this one might be a bit sticky still. And that's uh, one tool I forgot to tell you about, the hairdryer. And that's a bit noisy, so sorry about that. But that uh, will enable you to uh, heat set the, the colors. Uh, in other words, just uh, dry them fast. So I'll just uh, use this one. I'll just use this one to to dry my my stencil here to make sure that uh, it doesn't stick to the the other side here, uh, like that. So now I can use this side on the lure as well. So once again, I'll place it here on top of the lure. Like that. I think that works fine. Okay, hopefully, it's more or less. Uh, Equal, I think so. Okay, and then I'll just um, freehand the the back here. So we'll just um, and I'm afraid I'm running out of paint. I think. Unfortunately, I ran out of paint, so I'll just, well, I use some of the pre-mixed stuff here, hoping that it is more or less the same color. I think. 
think it's not, but I'll just grab a tiny little amount of black. And this looks fine now. like to uh, emphasize the eye a bit by doing a bit of uh, darkening the, the area around the eye. Getting very close here, starting to look a bit like a perch, I would say. Okay, and uh, well, then once again, cleaning the airbrush, and this time I think it will take a bit more because this color is quite dark. So, uh, well, in with some water back and forth. Spray a bit on the table. Watch out. Don't spray on your face. And uh, well, this is part of the, the airbrushing, which is maybe not that uh, fantastic, but uh, there's no way around it. Cleaning the, the gun all the time is uh, is not to be avoided um, and that's why I generally generally always uh, paint a lot of Lewis each time a few uh, at least uh, three or four of, of uh, one pattern because it's just so much work uh, changing the, the color every time I see time is running out on me so I have to be a big bit fast here so I'll uh, I'll risk it and go for a a quick clean here, and I see that uh, well either I talk too much or I just uh, am too slow. Well, I need to have an orange uh, fin on it. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll just mix up a tiny little bit of orange color here. Uh, drop of red. Mixed with a few drops of yellow, I think. Do the job. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and then one more stencil, and uh, I have lost that one that only had the fin the one that only had the fin is gone typically give me a second
Well, bad planning. Sorry, guys. Well, I'll just do something else. I'll just do something else. I'll just... Um, mask up uh, one of the other ones that has a fin here. Oh, I already have one. Sorry! Here we are. One that only has the fin here. So I'll just grab that one and then I just want to add a tiny bit of shape to it. Like that. Once again, try the pencil. Make the other side. And uh, just check to see if they're more or less alike. I think so. And actually, on the the original, I have some pattern here at the bottom, but I must admit, well, I don't know where that stencil is. So you will have to do without that one. Okay. So. Well, I can see that um, one bait was all that I had time for today. Um, it wasn't much, but uh, well, with airbrushing, it's just uh, it's just a bit of uh, cleaning up and uh, so on. So it actually takes some time. Um, I also planned had planned to do a bit of uh, going through the airbrush here, uh, the uh, the internal parts, but well. I'm, uh, I don't think I'll have time for that. Uh, maybe at another, uh, at another time I will, uh, I will do that part. Okay, well, here's the perch. I'll put that there. And then I'll get on to another point. Last time we had a draw. If we reached uh, 50 persons uh, watching at some time. Well, I announced that I would make a draw from this bait. Uh, I hadn't at that point considered how I would do it, but uh, well, afterwards I decided I would do it in the next show, which is this one. Unfortunately, it uh, took quite a while before that happened, which is today. Uh, but still, I have uh, printed out or actually written out the the 20 names that was very easy winning this competition, uh, the draw, huh? Only 20 names uh, was in for the draw. So I'll just um, put my big fat hand down to the bucket here, mix it up a bit and uh, draw a name. And uh, well, let's see who it is who has won the, the bait and uh, the name is the the YouTube name is Tracy Gibbo, so uh, Tracy Gibbo is the one winning the lure. Uh, I will try to uh, contact you on uh, on YouTube to um, to send you the lure on uh, on the details on how to uh, to send you the lure. Well, I'll just um, make sure that this one doesn't disappear. So I'll. I don't know. Get stuck in somewhere like that. Okay. Um, well, as another part of uh, the last show, in this show I will also introduce a, a bait from a, another lure maker, and uh, the bait I'll be using uh, this time is uh, a bait from a guy called uh, Mark Benton. Um, Mark is uh, 
one of my followers on both uh, YouTube and Facebook, and uh, at some point he uh, he uh, he wrote me with a lot of questions, and uh, it was a fairly long process of uh, knowing how to get going, uh, making baits in uh, resin, and uh, well, we talked uh, quite a lot, and in the end, he was uh, very grateful, and uh, and uh, he. Um, he wanted to send me a lure, which I have received now. I'll just uh, try to show it here in the in the boot cam. Uh, I must say this is extremely nice. Actually, I'm not sure that I can uh, make a lure this nice. This is very pretty, very nice, very natural look. Well, you can see my mo is more. Uh, well, I I. I I think they're more cartoon-like. Well, this one is really nice. And um, Mark has asked me to go and uh, get some uh, some teeth marks into this one, but um, I'm not sure I want to. I think I will uh, put this up on my wall because I just like it too much. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that. So, okay. Well, this last part of the show was uh, quite fast. Uh, any questions I have um, forgotten? I'll just um, I'll just check the the chat. I don't think so. Anyone else having some questions that I might answer while I'm at it? Not being an uh, expert airbrusher, but still seems to uh, go quite well. Nobody? Okay. That's fine as well. Then I'll just uh, well, I'll actually see if I can get my uh, find my 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 last uh, one here. Actually, I considered uh, trying to paint this one, the, the swim paint that I've been working on for, for a while. But, um, well, the painting of these parts is a bit more difficult and I was uh, afraid that I might mess it up uh, during the recording. So, well, I decided not to do that. Also, I uh, considered making one of my... Um, one of my uh, the jerk jerk baits here, but also with this I think you've seen it many times before, so uh, so I don't do that. Well, a question uh, just uh, came in here. Um, the pressure. Well, generally I will be somewhere between two and three bars on on the on the pressure, uh, depending on what colors I'm using. For very thin colors, uh, like uh, some of the one we use today, especially the transparent one and the Valero, um, I would use uh, low pressure. Uh, but uh, with some of the the heavier ones, uh, like the the pearlized colors, I would uh, crank up the 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 pressure a bit. Um, especially some of the the very heavy paints. There's one here, uh, which is. Uh, very heavy uh, uh, crystal paint. It looks very nice, but it, it needs a little bit of more pressure. So you should be in between. If you have problems with the with the paint, uh, the paint coming uh, being too thick, and uh, you're not able to thin it without uh, it being hard to to spray without uh, running. Well, try to crank up the 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 pressure a bit. It will help you. Uh, paint a lot. Earlier when I had a 3.5 millimeter nozzle uh, airbrush, uh, I really had difficulties on some of the, the heavy paints and for that I cranked it up more, sometimes even up to four bars to, to get a, a decent flow of that colors. Okay, uh, the weight of that lure, uh, well the weight of this lure, my, my the perch, uh, the, the pie, uh, the jerk here, is uh, about 35 grams. I think um, if you're talking about this one, I think it's a bit heavier and I don't really remember. 
but I can answer you quite fast because I have a scale right here. So I'll just try to wait. I think it uh, goes to 60 grams or something like that. No, it goes to 75. So this one is 75. But it's also a lot more bulky and uh, and uh, and big than the other. And also this one is, uh, is suspending or maybe even floating. While the best um, result I've had with this one is uh, with a with a, a sinking lure, uh, because if it's not sinking, if you have the the the, the floating that you would do with a jerk bait, uh, this simply just uh, moves up in the surface and won't uh, go down. So so this one is sinking. This one is uh, intermediate or floating. Um, so 75 grams for this one. Uh, probably a few more even. Uh, once it has uh, had epoxy on it and everything. Um, Tommy, well, 3D printing is something I've considered quite a lot. I think it's a great way of uh, making lures, but I, I'm afraid that both the, the, the cost of, uh, of, uh, of the, the plastic used and uh, and also, if if you don't have a, a very expensive 3D printer, I think that the surface will require quite a lot of uh, finish. Um, I would, uh, for me, if I ever had a 3D printer, I would use it mainly for making masters, because that way I would make uh, make be sure that that the masters was uh, completely equal um, uh, on both sides, um, which when you make them in by hand. Uh, you can only use your eyes and maybe measure a bit, but you will never be quite confident that it's 100% uh, equal. You could do that with a 3D printer, but I think uh, I would use it for making uh, masters, uh, and then I would uh, uh, quite quickly after I have made my first one and tested it, I would move on to uh, using resin because, well, resin is very easy to, to use. Yeah, there's a lot of extra work. There is a bit of extra work after the, uh, casting the 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 resin lures, but but uh, compared to the 3D, I think it's it's uh, very minor. So, well, but I am dreaming of buying a 3D printer. I must admit that it seems like a very nice way to go. Okay. Anybody having a last minute question? Or something I should show. Um, I probably forgot something. I think I had a lot more planned, but uh, well, this hour just goes so fast, and uh, well, I'm happy for everybody watching. So, um, well, nobody. Well, we didn't quite reach the the 60 person mark today. I don't think we were even close. Too bad, but um, well, I think this subject is uh, a bit harder as it is trying quite uh, time consuming to uh, to paint and uh, well, it's not that action packed, but uh, still, um, still I hope um, you liked it. The, I'm very satisfied with my new painting boot. Uh, both. Uh, I think I have a very nice uh, working light in here. I have uh, a nice, uh, the, the ventilation really makes it nice working here, especially when you are priming and stuff where you pull a lot of uh, air. And uh, so, uh, so I'm very satisfied with that. And I can also see from the, the filter in, in, in the top that uh, it's pulling quite a, a lot of paint up that way, which is not going into the room and into my lungs. So. Uh, well, that is very satisfying. Okay. Well, I think uh, that was all for this show. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully I will be back with a, a show more. Not that long from now. I have planned to, to do a little bit of uh, live epoxy coating. Because that is a, a, a subject that... Uh, I think quite many people find difficult, and uh, must admit uh, it's one of the the, the trickiest part of uh, 
uh, making your own lures. So I think I'll do that next time. Um, okay, well, that was all for this time. I hope you liked it, and I hope you see me soon. Bye, everybody.